Hello everyone, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3 and we are in week 4, brought to you by To Enable. Today we are going to be looking at key signatures and we'll be discussing the cycle of fifths. Key signatures, what are key signatures? First of all, they are written at the beginning of the staff following the clef. They indicate to us the accidentals that we are going to use, whether it will be sharps or flats. We use a cycle of fifths to determine the keys used in music, starting with the mother of all keys, the C major key. Let us study the figure below. Now with the cycle of fifths, it will help us determine the next key by using an anti-clockwise method or a clockwise method. When we go clockwise, we count five from C. And when we go anti-clockwise, we count four from C. Five, four. So that means that from C, C, D, E, F, G, that will be our next key. And it will only have one sharp. The same thing, G, A, B, C, D see and then with our D it will have two sharps so we notice that every time we go clockwise we add another sharp every time we go anti-clockwise we will add a flat for instance from C let's count four C D E F we get to F. There we go. And we add a flat. Then from F, we have to count 4 again. F, G, A, B. We're going to get a B flat. Why are we getting a B flat instead of a B? It is because we already have the accidental of B flat. So B flat will have two flats. Same thing, so on and so forth until we get to the other side. That's how the cycle of fifths works. Clockwise, we count five times. Anti-clockwise, we count four times so that we can determine the next key. Noticing from the figure that we looked at, the cycle of fifths, I have discussed with you that when we move from C clockwise, then we get to G. And it is the dominant of C major. We move from C anti-clockwise. We get to F, which is the subdominant. Remember our terms. Every time we move clockwise, you add a sharp. And when we move anti-clockwise, we add a flat. We can remember our sharps and flats by using this phrase. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. 
That means that for our sharps, we're going to have F sharp. And then the next one is going to be F sharp and C sharp. So you don't leave that F behind. And then for the third one, we're going to have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and so on and so forth. For our flats, we go anti-clockwise. Meaning we're going from the back of our rhyme day, which will be battle ends and down goes Charles father. So that means that B flat, the next one will be B flat and E flat. The next one will be B flat, E flat, and A flat. And then B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and so on and so forth. Down here are the listed keys. As I said, in G major, we're only going to have F sharp. In F major, B flat. D major, F sharp and C sharp. B flat major, B flat and E flat. A major, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. E flat major, B flat, E flat, A flat. E major, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. A flat major, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Now another thing, interesting thing that we can notice is that every time when we look at the flats, That the flat or the accidental will be the next key. You see that? Then B flat, E flat. Look, it's the next key. All right? And then B flat, E flat, A flat will be the next key. Who can guess what will be the next key after A flat? Of course, it will be D flat. Minor key signatures. All major keys have relative minor keys. Both major and the relative minor keys can have the same key signature, but the minor will start on the sixth degree of the major scale. Let's look at the example. C major. The relative minor is A minor because we are counting two six. So it's going to be C, D, E, F, G, A. Another example, A major. The relative minor will be F sharp minor. Why? Because in A major, we already have an accidental of an F sharp, which makes the sixth of A major F sharp. So it's going, that's why it is F sharp minor. Then with D flat major, the relative minor will be B flat 
maina. The table below shows us all the keys in their relative minor keys. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.